Hi, I'm Anna Ross. Welcome to my yard. The guinea fowl might put in an appearance at some point. They're quite funny. But we have a sort of policy, like we, we, never, we never protect any of them, anything from anything, unless somebody's actually about to lose their life. Because otherwise what happens, they go to big shows and they can't handle anything. You know, so we say, okay, unless it's dangerous, then they will see everything. But in the stables, I keep it very peaceful. Like we don't have radios on in the yard. So the, the stables are always really calm and nice for them. Actually, Wolves is very quiet. That's why he lives in the stable round the corner. He lives in, we call it chicken world because it's some, um, he lives opposite the chickens. And we always think it's like he's watching chicken telly all day. So he, he watches like the soap opera with the chickens, you know, and the cockerel gets on it, get, gets it on with the other chicken and, and then the other one gets the hump and we think he likes that, but he doesn't like being in the main yard because he doesn't like the people walking past him all the time. So like at shows and things, I keep the, I, I keep the, um, what do you call it, things, blind things up in the stables for him so that he can have his own little man cave. Don't you, Wilbs? So he's made himself a man cave round in Chicken World. I think people think it's quite funny because obviously at the moment he's my top horse. And you come in the yard and he's in this little box round the back opposite the chickens, but that's where he wants to live, so that's where he lives. So you can see Wilbs is singularly unimpressive when he first comes out. <laughs> but I like him being like this because he saves himself. Wilbs doesn't chop big unless I ask him to chop big and that suits me fine because it means he's not pounding around here wearing himself out. So I always do all his loosening work just in a in a little trot like this. We just go pony clubbing. I can't. We can go around the outside of the puddle. Wilbs is not a fan of water. Good boy. I've got a little puddle there. And Rob's is a good egg really because we completely changed his changed his life. He came from a very small yard in Holland. Um, we hadn't done too much really. And he led quite a sheltered life with his lovely, very loving owner. And um, of course we wanted to do a bit more with him, so completely rocked his world. So the beginning of the year. Um, he was quite nervous. I took him at the back end of last year to Samur and he won the middle tour there, which is the class in between the small tour and the, um, and the Grand Prix. Because I just wanted to take him to a show and let him kind of see a bit of, of the world. So he did really well there. And then I took him to Spain with complete baptism of fire <laughs> and a few more shows just to give him some experience. And he did well. And then we had a little break and then I got a slightly unexpected phone call. Well, I, I was, was not expecting it to say, could he please go on the team at Hickstead for the Nations Cup? So, I, so we did. He did really well. He had just under 70 percent. The only reason he didn't get 70 was because his greedy rider, that would be me, um, pushed a little bit too much in the last trot extension. And I should have just sat still and got my seven and I didn't. I wanted my 8.5. <laughs> so he's kind of ready to start now. He's on his first season international Grand Prix, but now he, now he feels a little bit more confident. And we always said that about him. We said his only problem is he doesn't know how good he is. <laughs> we all believed in him, but he didn't believe in himself. And I think he wasn't too sure about me in the beginning either. <laughs> but it's harder. Most of my horses I've had from the beginning. So, the, the, you know, I have already had that relationship with them. I know all the history. With him, he came to me a little bit later. 
and I find that more difficult because I'm very, very used to, to training them all the way up myself. Now, I did his first International Grand Prix with him, of course, but it's still a later stage than if you've taught them to canter. <laughs> it's very, very different. You don't know the, the person so much. He, he is not such a confident horse. And, but, and sometimes you need to push him a little bit and say, right, come on, you can do this, there's no problem. And sometimes you have to sympathize. And actually, <laughs> depends slightly where you are on the test, which bit you sympathize with and which bit you push with. So of course that takes, you know, that takes me time to work out as well. But I feel like now we're a partnership. And you can see I spend quite a bit of time in the beginning just getting him loose. Sorry, it's a bit boring, but otherwise I can't ask him to do all the other stuff. You know, I just canter around, but I'm asking for little things. I'm like making like little half halts and bringing him back a bit. I let him be quite long in the frame. Um, you know, and we just kind of ramble around there. That's a little bit more collected canter. So I'm just actually, although it looks like I'm just kind of trolleying around, I'm actually doing a few things like collecting, like you see now, the counter's much more collected. He likes to put his quarters on the right, so I have to just make sure I'm not disappearing over there as well. There's a few ma manual reshuffles back to the left. That's good. And obviously he's a Grand Prix horse, so he can counter quite collected, but I want him to do it in a relaxed way. I don't want to be tightening him up all the time. Good boy. Good. Good boy. And that also that he stays in that canter and I don't have to hold him there. So that's important as well because then he can't be loose in the back. If he's not loose in the back, then he's going to have a lot of trouble pulling off the work. So that's really important. And on the left frame, he runs a bit more than he does on the right. So I'm always fiddling around with that, trying to make that work. Then I do the same thing this way. I think it has to be quite boring to be a dressage rider, really. You have to have that kind of repetitive <laughs> tendencies. Like you don't mind just coming out and doing this because most of the time this is what I do. <laughs> I think people think sometimes you come out with a glass of champagne in one hand, do a Grand Prix horse in the other, you know, go for a few moves and grooves and then, you know, go go drink champagne and ring all your mates, you know, before posting a video on Instagram. You know, actually what we're mostly doing is just faffing around making horses straight and go forward. Because if you can go forward and you can come back and you can bend left and right and you can go fast and you can go slow when you want, then you can ride the whole Grand Prix anyway. That's all there is to it, really. He always wants to go a little bit faster this way. Unless you put a puddle in front of him, then he doesn't want to go anywhere at all. He's looking forward to the indoor season. He's out of a show jumper, actually. He's not dressage bread. This actually is quite typical for him. In the beginning, because he's not very confident in the changes, he makes mistakes. And you'll see as he goes on, he gets better. And I've learned that now at a show. If he makes a mistake, I'll just keep going, I'll just ignore him. Then then actually he's quite reliable in the test. But because he's such a good egg, if you start making a thing, he gets all upset because he doesn't like to do it wrong. So that's just a little thing with him. 
that I know. Like, never worry, it'll be all right. Don't make a fuss, just stick leave him alone. It's a funny little quirk of his. I had to tell our chef that. It exited. I was like, don't worry when it warms up. And of course, in a test, he did super changes. The thing with him is he's always tried anyway. So you don't need to boss him around. He was try he was always trying. And he only misses because he gets nervous and he tightens up. So there wouldn't be any point me having a word because it's only because he was nervous anyway. him quite round always because he is naturally he can be a little bit stiff in his back so I always work him a little bit round because if he's gonna go anywhere he can go a little bit like inverted in his body so I'm always anxious that he works over his back and then I bring him up in the shows but we're generally in a conversation usually in a bit of a conversation about that because he wants to, he is he can be a little bit stiff in the bag and there's no way that riding him with the neck up all the time is ever going to make him any more elastic and you can see like in the piaf again i keep it forward i don't like overwhelm him by asking for it on the spot all the time. I ask him to keep it forward. I always keep the door open. You see, he's always keen. He's a keen bean. And he's always got a lot of energy. That's a really nice thing about him. It's just actually getting him to organize it. And he always wants to work. So I ride quite a few transitions in and out. And again, I accept that he'll probably make a mistake in the beginning. I don't mind that. And there I went rising at the end because sometimes he can come back a little bit too abrupt. I want to make sure he doesn't sort of crunch on his back. So I just rise. And I'm 45, not 25. So that's another way to train it. And you can see it's just really a version of lots of different transitions, you know, going all the way forward, coming all the way back. And that's all we do really to train him to Grand Prix. <laughs>